Today in this shop, we are going to be looking at our front obstacle detection system on a 21 F-150. Yeah. This truck was sent over by a body shop after they repaired a deer collision, and it supposedly had one of the front sod modules replaced. I'm going to start diagnosis on this by pulling all the codes on it, and I'm going to be using the Windows-based version of Forescan today. Coming over from body shop, obviously the front end's been a part on this thing and a lot of things have been unplugged. So I think before we start paying too much attention to the codes in it, I am going to clear all the codes and we're going to see what comes back immediately or what doesn't clear. Okay, in the IPMA we have three codes that came back immediately. We have a U024E, lost communication with side obstacle detection control module C. That would be the left front sod module. We also have a circuit open or shorted to battery for the left front sod module. And for sod module D, we have an initial configuration not complete. And that would be the right or the passenger side sod module. The front sod modules are located on both sides of the vehicle, just ahead of the wheel arch and underneath the front bumper cover upper trim panel. They are a radar based sensor and are used to detect objects for blue cruise, pre collision assist, and remote park assist. And judging by the initial configuration not complete code we have in the passenger side front sod module, I'm going to guess that the passenger side module was the one that was replaced, and I'm going to go ahead and configure it or load it with ASPL data. I'll click the Run button here, and that will go ahead and read the data that is currently in SOD CMD. Okay, so on the screen here, we're looking at the ASPL file that's currently loaded into that module. I'm going to go ahead and click the Load Factory ASPL button at the lower left of the screen. And that's going to download the correct ASPIL file for this module and this VIN number from Ford. And I've had some people ask in the comments if you need a Ford login or an FMC login to use the feature. And you do not. You do need a licensed version of Forescan, whether that's the paid license or I think they still offer a 60-day free trial. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Load Factory ASPIL button. And you can see all the data has changed. This is the correct ASS built or configuration file for this module for this VIN number. And to write this to the module, I'm going to go ahead and click the Write All button at the lower left of the screen. I'll click the Yes button. We're sure we want to overwrite the data in the module. And it's writing the data. And blocks program successfully. I'm going to cycle the ignition key off and back on. I'll click the OK button, and then I'm going to go ahead and click the Stop button at the lower left of the screen to get us out of the ASBuilt file. Let's go back to the DTC screen, and we'll clear all codes and see what comes back. We'll cycle the key off and back on again. Okay, so loading the ASPIL data, I got rid of our configuration not complete code for the passenger side SOD module, or SOD module D. But we still have lost communication codes and an open circuit code for SOD module C, or the driver's side SOD module. So at this point, I think it's probably time to take a look at the driver's side SOD module, inspect the connector, and check for broken wires. The SOD module is located behind the upper bumper trim and is held on with three 10mm bolts. I'm going to go ahead and remove it here so we can inspect it for damage from the collision. In the process of removing the SOD module, I'm pretty sure I found the problem, or the reason why we have no communication with it. The electrical connector on the back of the module was not fully seated or latched, and I could tell this because when I started wiggling on it, it just came unplugged without depressing the unlocking tab. And I'm not seeing any cracks or damage to the module, so I think we're going to go ahead and reassemble it, make sure the electrical connector gets fully seated, and retest. I'm going to go ahead and change the module list from all to just the IPMA so it's a little quicker to do the self-test. I'll click yes, we do want to reset the codes, and we'll cycle the key off and back on for the fourth or fifth time this video. And there we go, no codes in the IPMA. If you found this helpful or interesting, please click the like button down below. I got a lot more great stuff coming up, so please subscribe, and as always, have a great week.